Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, Board Certified Laser Dermatologist. So today will be a really quick video, uh, but I think it's a very important one about the continual debate about which is the best sunscreen. Do you use a physical sunscreen or physical blocker compared to a chemical sunscreen? And which one should you choose? Which one's better? What are the pros and cons? So this is a continual debate in regards to sunscreen. So let's take a step back and understand what sunscreens mean what it does a physical blocker mean and what does a chemical blocker mean so when everyone looks at sunscreens they look at the spf factor and they go wow this spf you know spf of 60 must be you know twice as good as spf of 30. the answer is no spf is a measure of burn time and burn time only and that's with the uvb it does not measure uva and UVB goes superficial, UVA goes deeper. So if you're looking into things like uh, degeneration of your collagen and protecting your skin from, um, I guess, free radicals, you have to look at the UVA um, coverage as well. So that gets more complex than that because when you're looking at the SPF only and read off the SPF, it doesn't mean much except um, how long you can stay out in the sun for. That's all it means. So for example, an SPF of two gives you 50% protection. SPF of 10 gives you 90% protection. Now, here is the interesting bit. When you go up to an SPF of 30, it blocks 97% of UVB, not UVA, UVB rays, right? So SPF 30 equates to 97. Now you double it. SPF 60, you protect 98%. So by doubling your SPF, um, you're getting an incremental gain. That's only a 1% extra protection compared to an SPF of 30. But if you look how much marketing is, um, you look at the same sunscreen at SPF 30 and you look at the sunscreen that, with an SPF 60 and you think, well, obviously a 60 is much better than a 30. Uh, the answer is not. Um, that's purely academic and that 1% extra coverage uh, in the real world counts for very little. Okay, so let's talk about physical versus chemical. Physical sunscreens uh, contain, apart from preservatives, they contain very little in the way of chemicals. Um, the main agent for these sunscreens um, are things called titanium and zinc oxide. Now here's the debate. Uh, many years ago, I remember because I did a couple of papers on this, <laughs> many years ago there was a debate in regards to do these particles called nanoparticles um, affect you from a health point of view? Do they cause cancer? Short answer is no. The reason being is because CE, TGA and FDA have all approved this. Okay, so yes, there is the uh, continual debate of um, nanoparticles. In other words, microparticles of both um, zinc and titanium dioxide, which are metals that get absorbed into your skin. Now, in order for a sunscreen to be cosmetically elegant, in other words, that's why they call it invisible zinc, uh, they've got to actually make it into a very small particle size. So, maybe, yeah, 25 years ago, they used to be about 100, between 80 to 100 microns. And nowadays, they're about 20 to 30 microns. The smaller the micron size, the less reflection of light you get, which means instead of being, you know, the old-fashioned zinc that you actually put on, um, they become cosmetically elegant. But at the same time, when they become cosmetically elegant, it reduces the UV, UV protection overall. And that includes both UVB and UVA. Now, that is the cons, is that that's a debate. The other thing as well is that generally speaking, when you're looking at physical blockers, they're usually a little bit more expensive compared to um, chemical blockers. But um, they are, uh, in my opinion, uh, cause less irritation in your skin because you're actually using uh, inert metals on your skin and they work immediately because they, as soon as you put it on, they reflect light. Whilst uh, physical sunscreens need to be left on for a minimum of 15 minutes before UV exposure. Now, less irritation with this, um, but the flip side, it costs, costs more, okay? Now, for chemical sunscreens, they offer uh, just the same amount of UV protection, but generally speaking, I'm talking about generally speaking, 
a physical sunscreen um, that contains zinc or titanium dioxide will offer you a higher UVA protection. And that's what you want as well. You want to actually protect your collagen. Protecting your collagen reduces um, skin aging. So if I was to go for a sunscreen, in general, like I said, I'll pick a physical sunscreen. There are exceptions to the rule. For example, like La Roche-Posay makes a really good chemical sunscreen uh, that contains um, Merxil XL. And depending on which country you're at, they actually do add chemicals in together with uh, physical blocking agents such as titanium or zinc oxide. So different countries have uh, different variations of the same sunscreen. Uh, depends on the regulation, so whether it be Europe, US or in Australia with the TGA. Now, um, the disadvantage, so the advantages of this is that, um, usually speaking, higher UVA protection. The disadvantage um, of, um, of them is actually the cost. Chemical sunscreens are generally uh, super cheap. So you can buy things like um, from up there, um, Neutrogena, SunSense, they all make really good Skin Cancer Society of Australia. They all make, uh, so Sun, Can Sun Council of Australia, <laughs> they make really good uh, sunscreens and they only cost $10, okay? So that's the advantage. And the, the, Disadvantage, I guess, is skin irritation. So if you do suffer from things like rosacea, seborrheic dermatitis, eczema, or any kind of facial dermatitis, generally speaking, um, the physical sunscreens are the one to go for and not the chemical. So patients like, especially with rosacea, I usually advise physical sunscreens. Um, the other thing um, which is really important that patients forget and there are three things um, with sunscreens, whether it be physical uh, or whether it be chemical. First of all, do not look at the SPF. If you get an SPF of 30, in my opinion, that's good enough. If you're paying anything more, it's either marketing or um, it's, it's just crap. Okay, so <laughs> just go for an SPF of 30. What patients forget is that um, it's the amount of sunscreen, the application, uh, and the frequency. So just to give you an idea, uh, I did a paper about 20 years ago with Gillian Murphy, who in my opinion is the leading um, uh, dermatologist, as in photobi photobiologist, um, dermatologist, and she's in Ireland. So I was very fortunate because I studied under her, and she studied under John Hawke in um, St. John's Hospital um, of Skin in London. So I'm very fortunate to be trained by, I guess, um, one of the world's leader um, in regards to photobiology. So Julian, thank you very much for all your training when uh, I was in Ireland many, many years ago. So what was I on about? Oh yes, we did this paper, yeah. And the paper showed that application amount really counts for a lot because patients forget it's not using two grams to cover your face. You've got to cover your ears, you've got to cover your neck, your décolletage, and that's very important. And you need five grams. So five grams equals one teaspoon. And that's a lot of sunscreen, okay? So if you're using a physical sunscreen, five grams. You're using a chemical sunscreen, still five grams. Application, so the first thing is amount. The second thing is application, the frequency. You need to use it at least, at least twice a day. If you're going out in the sea or the water, you need to use it probably three, four times in that given day because it's gonna wash off. If you sweat, if you're a runner, you gotta keep reapplying because they do wash off. Okay, so the second thing is your application frequency. The third thing is cosmetically elegance. In other words, what kind of um, sunscreen you like to use. So in my opinion, that's the most important rather than the actual SPF or the actual brand name of it. Because if you're gonna be using something which is gonna be comedogenic, in other words, cause you um, acne or cause breakouts or clog your skin, you're not gonna like that sunscreen. So the most important thing in my aspect, in my regards, is not the actual branding, it's not the actual SPF, it's whether you like to use it or not. Because a sunscreen which you like to use means you're actually going to use it. And that's why people ask me, hey, why do I like to use, um, why do I endorse it? I don't endorse La Roche-Posay. It's because I like using this because uh, it's light on my, screen, uh, on my skin and I prefer the texture compared to invisible zinc. But having said that, other people might find this better compared to this. So remember, 
skincare and skincare products is as individualized as you are. That's what I've been trying to teach you guys for the last two years. Um, and that's why when it comes to which one's better, uh, there is no right, there is no wrong. Uh, generally speaking, if you are looking uh, for sunscreen, like I said, look at the UVA index as well. You can't go wrong with this because this has got a built-in high UVA protection. Well, this one, you have to look at um, certain chemicals um, such as Enthelios XL or um, things like Avobenzone, uh, which can help protect against UVA. So that's far more complex when you're reading chemicals in regards to physical sunscreens. So guys, I hope you liked that video because sunscreens to me, uh, like I said, my career first started out in photobiology. So that's why uh, sunscreens to me form the foundation of what I do. So, you know, can sunscreens change um, uh, bad sun damage uh, from this to this? The answer is no, it can't, but certainly lasers can help. Uh, and lasers can transform this amount of sun damage and this amount of uh, solar keratosis down to this. And that's using fractionated uh, fraxel lasers. So sunscreens can help prevent photo damage, but it can't reverse it to that amount. So once I do all my laser procedures, whether it becomes uh, melasma treatments or laser resurfacing, uh, or even treatments of birthmarks, sunscreens still form the foundation of aftercare. So guys, I hope you liked that video. Uh, it's a really quick one, and I hope it, um, it debunks any of the myths in regards to physical versus chemical sunscreens. Guys, if you like this, uh, please like it, comment, uh, it's an interactive channel, and by all means, share. Uh, and if you like this, uh, please subscribe. I do one uh, video, educational video, every week, usually on Saturdays. So hit that subscribe button, and thank you very much for your support. See you same time next week. Bye.